Welcome everybody to the College of Complex. My name is Tim and I'd like to welcome everybody, everybody to tonight's festivities or what we would call political dialogue for what that might mean. There are two rules to the college. One is no personal attacks and uh, two is one fool at a time. That means I can't call Charlie a schmuck though I usually do. And of course the format of the college is as follows. First we'll have a brief uh, we'll have a brief announcements period. Then we'll have our presenter, Justin Tucker, who can go up to about an hour. Then we'll have questions and answers from the audience. And then we'll have our infamous rebuttal period where at the end of the rebuttal, we'll uh, let uh, Justin get the last word. We'll generally try to finish up by nine o'clock. And with that, uh, I'll now turn it over to Charlie for the announcements part of this, of this uh, festivities. Okay, Charlie, when you're ready. All right, welcome everyone to meeting number 3,677 of the College of Complexes, the playground for people who think. First of all, as usual, I want to remind you that we have a Google email group, which you may want to register for. You get one or two emails per week alerting you to the upcoming programs. We also have a meetup group also featured on the main page of our website, Center Top, which uh, functions in the same fashion on oh, not any traffic. So I highly recommend everyone please do so. What about now, Although I am not a capitalist, I will give an advertisement for our upcoming programs. On August the 6th, we will have an academic from Illinois Wesleyan University talk on the philosophy of money. So this should be an interesting program. A lot to discuss regarding that, particularly now at this period in time. On August the 13th, we're going to hear from Brian Denny. He's working on his an attorney is going to give us some constitutional issues. So we hope that he has not given us a description yet. He'll be working. He said it's under development. So it's constitutional issues. Um, well, I guess the 13th. Uh, on August the 20th, we'll be visited by uh, representatives, myself. I have a PowerPoint on the platform of the Green Party. Uh, the Illinois Green Party uh, and information on the Chicago Greens and other chapters. So it should be a good program. I, I got a pretty good PowerPoint I put together um, uh, on this and on ecological and other issues confronting our society and our planet. So that's August the 20th. On August the 27th, uh, we'll be hearing a presentation on the stand, uh, installing community solar. So you and your pals, your neighbors, uh, could install a solar array oh. and get off the grid. Uh, but that's a presentation by CUB, the Citizens Utility Board, dealing with electric rates. So that should be an interesting program. On September the 3rd, I will be presenting as our special Labor Day speaker. We have featured someone on the condition of organized labor. And I've got a really good PowerPoint put together on the history of the factory and how we live, how we came to live in a factory made world. There's certainly enough in this to generate discussions for several hours, I assure you. Okay, that's on September the 3rd. Our next open dates, therefore, are September 10, 17, and 24. If you'd like to get on the schedule, please furnish me with a title and a description, and we'll confirm the speaking engagement. Also, uh, regarding announcements, I'm not certain if he's able to get through to us tonight, but longtime college regular, J.J. Jameson, 
otherwise known as Norman Porter, was released from prison um, for uh, uh, re uh, many of us are familiar, acquainted with JJ, and we certainly welcome back to our community. Um, okay, that's it, Tim. Take it away. Just a brief plug for our uh, Dallas campus. We do have another uh, another um, another uh, campus that we use, and it's our Dallas, Texas campus. And so far, they've got uh, they're going to be. Um, their next meeting will be on uh, Thursday, August 11th. And I guess they're still looking for speakers, but they meet on Thursday nights via Zoom right now. And uh, they're uh, also plugged us. So with that, I will uh, stop my screen sharing. And uh, I guess, uh, Justin, if you're- I have ready. an announcement. Oh, I have an announcement, Tim. Go ahead, Bob. Go ahead, Bob. Uh Yet uh, tomorrow is the uh, last day of the Newberry Light Book Fair. Uh, you're 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 coming in choppy, Bob. Can I say it again, please. <clears throat> okay, tomorrow is the last day of the Newberry Library Book Fair, where the where the Bug House Square debates used to be. Mm. Yes. Okay, maybe we can get that going again here. I did see something about it. I can put a brief screen share up of the new ver Now I'll do that at some point. Let's and move on. Anything else? If not, uh, Justin, if you're... All right, Justin, if you're ready, let's uh, get presenting. Well, everyone else, please mute. Please mute. Red X. Red X, everybody. Okay. All right. I Let's uh, go, Justin, and when you're ready, we'll start. Right. Um, so, uh, can you guys see my screen? Yes. Yes, we can see your screen. All right. So, my name is Justin Tucker. I'm the executive director of the Libertarian Party of Illinois, and I want to thank the College of Complexes once again for hosting me. It's always an honor to be here. Um, we have a couple, Libertarian Party has a couple events coming up. We got a fundraiser, Jason Ross Decker. This is going to be on Monday night, August 1st, uh, 8 p.m. at the Tech One Safari Cafe in Harvey, Illinois. $25 uh, to help Jason Ross Decker. Um, and then on... Tuesday, August 2nd, we're going to host Preston Nelson, LP candidate uh, for treasurer. Um, and we'll be meeting at the Piggery on Irving Park Road. Please join us. Um, so there's some late uh, here's some of the latest news here, Libertarian Party of Illinois. So Libertarian Party had its first primary in Cook County uh, back in June. Thea Satsos, she'll be our candidate for uh, board president. Joseph Schreiner for county clerk. Brad Sandifer for sheriff. Michael Murphy for treasurer. Nico Satsoulis for assessor. Um and then we also got, um, we had our first ever, uh, or excuse me, we also got Jim Hume, commissioner district, uh, commissioner candidate in the first district, Jason Decker, uh, whose fundraiser is on Monday. Uh, he is the commissioner candidate in the fifth district and Brandon Sizelove, commissioner in the 11th district. It's also uh, the first um, time we were able to elect township committee persons in Cook County. So Jason Decker in the Bremen Township and Andrew Kapinski in the Leiden Township. Um, so that's awesome. And then um, we turned in roughly 37,000 signatures for our statewide candidates. So on the ballot in November, you'll see Scott Schluter for governor, John Phillips for Lieutenant Governor, 
Dan Robin for Attorney General, Preston Nelson for Treasurer, Deidre McCloskey for Comptroller. Um, and if you want to join the Libertarian Party, uh, these are the links to go and join lpillinois.org slash join. Also, please donate to the Libertarian Party by visiting lpillinois.org, clicking on that donate button. You can make a one-time, monthly, or yearly contribution. Um, if you donate $1,776 within one year, uh, you become a lifetime member and you get uh, you get admission uh, free package to future LP Illinois conventions. And just so you know, maximum donations are $10,000. Uh, so please help out the Libertarian Party of Illinois by clicking that donate button at lpillinois.org. So um, I'm here this evening to discuss the platform of the Libertarian Party, specifically the current platform that was amended by the delegates at our last convention in Reno last May. While preparing this talk, I used lpedia.org, which is the LP wiki, as a reference. I'm also indebted to Karen Ann Harlos, who's our current secretary on the Libertarian National Committee, her presentation on the Statement of Principles is an excellent introdu introduction to what the LP is all about. Now, the platform is divided into four parts. Uh, as you can see, um, at least as far as policy goes, but we also have a preamble and a statement of principles. Um, I'm going to skip over the preamble for now, and I'm going to go into the statement of principles. We, the members of the Libertarian Party, challenge the cult of the, of the omnipotent state and defend the rights of the individual. We hold that all individuals have the right to exercise sole dominion over their own lives and have the right to live in whatever manner they choose, so long as they do not forcibly interfere with the equal rights of others to live in whatever manner they choose. Governments throughout history have regularly operated on the opposite principle, that the state has the right to dispose of the lives of individuals and the fruits of their labor. Even within the United States, all political parties other than our own grant to government the right to regulate the lives of individuals and seize the fruit, fruits of their labor without their consent. On the contrary, uh, we on the contrary deny the right of any government to do these things and hold that where government exists, it must not violate the rights of any individual, namely, one, the right to life. Accordingly, we support the prohibition of the initiation of physical force against others. Two, the right, of, the right to liberty of speech and action. Accordingly, we oppose all attempts by government to abridge the freedom of speech and press, as well as government censorship in any form. And three, the right to property. Accordingly, we oppose all government interference with private property, such as confiscation, nationalization, and eminent domain and support the prohibition of robbery, trespass, fraud, and misrepresentation. Since governments, when instituted, must not violate individual rights, we oppose all interference by government in the areas of voluntary and contractual relations among individuals. People should not be forced to sacrifice their lives and property for the benefit of others. They should be left free by government to deal with one another as free traders and the resilient economic system, the one compatible with free with the protection of individual rights is the free market. Um, the original statement of principles was drafted by John Hospers. Uh, he was the first LP presidential nominee. He taught philosophy at the city of Southern California was chair of their philosophy department. Um, he's also the first known gay man to get an electoral vote. The original version appeared in June 1972 at the first Libertarian National Convention in Denver and was amended to its current form as the, at the second convention in Dallas, Texas. To give you an example of how it changed, let me give you a passage uh, of the original wor wording has only one legitimate function to the protection of individual rights we oppose all interference by government in the areas of voluntary and contractual relations among individuals men 
should not be forced to sacrifice their lives and property for the benefit of others. They should be left free by government to deal with one another and the free traders on the free market and the resultant economic system, the one uh, compatible with the protection of man's rights is the laissez-faire capitalism. So the anarchists and the small government libertarians like John Hospers fine-tuned the language um, that was satisfactory to both wings of the party. Um, this became known as the Dallas Accord. The statement of principles is affirmed and protected by the bylaws of the Libertarian Party. I won't bore you with those details. All state affiliates must adopt the statement of principles if they wish to be recognized by the LNC. The statement of principles is also used by the Judiciary Committee to strike down platform planks or resolutions at convention that contradict the statement of principles. Now, let's go to the preamble, which actually appears before um, the statement of principles. As libertarians, we seek a world of liberty, a world in which all individuals are sovereign over their own lives and are not forced to sacrifice their values for the benefit of others. We believe that respect for individual rights is the essential precondition for a free and prosperous world that force and fraud must be banished from human relationships and that through freedom and can peace and prosperity be realized. Consequently, we defend each person's right to engage in any activity that is peaceful and honest and welcome the diversity that freedom brings. The world we seek is to build, uh, the world we seek to build is one where individuals are free to follow their own dreams in their own ways without interference from government or any authoritarian power. Um, in the following pages, we set forth our basic principles and enumerate various policy stands derived from those principles. These specific policies are not our goal, however. Our goal is nothing more or less than a world set free in our lifetime. It is to this end that we take these stands. So, personal liberty. Individuals are inherently free to make choices for themselves and must accept responsibility for the consequences of the choices they make. Our support for an individual's right to make choices in life does not mean that we necessarily approve or disapprove of these choices. No individual group or government may rightly initiate force against any individual group or government. Libertarians reject the notion that groups have inherent rights. We support the rights of the smallest minority, the individual. Individ uh, regarding self-ownership, -owner individuals own their bodies and have rights over them that other individuals, groups, and governments may not violate. Individuals have the freedom and responsibility to decide what they knowingly and voluntarily can consume and what risks they accept to their own health, finances, safety, or life. Uh, expression and communication. We support full freedom of expression and oppose government censorship, regulation, or control of communications, media, and technology. Language is the per if that is perceived to be offensive to certain groups or individuals is not a cause for legal action. Speech that is not literally a threat of aggression or violence is not in itself aggression or violence and can never be used to justify aggression or violence. Individuals are responsible for their own reactions to speech. We favor the freedom to engage in or abstain from any religious activities that do, do not violate the rights of others. We oppose government actions that either aid or attack any religion. Privacy. Libertarians advocate individual privacy and government transparency. Transparency. We are committed to ending government's practice of spying on everyone. We support the rights recognized the Fourth Amendment to be secure in our persons, homes, property, and communications. Protection from unreasonable search and seizures should include records held by third parties such as email, medical, and library records. Personal relationships. Sexual orientation, preference, gender, or gender identity should have no impact on government's treatment of such individuals, such as in current marriage, child custody, adoption, immigration, or military service laws. Government does not have the authority to find, promote, license, or restrict personal relationships, regardless of the number of participants. Consenting adults should be free to choose their own sexual practices and personal relationships. 
until such time as the uh, as the government stops its Ill illegitimate practice of marriage licensing, such licenses must be granted to all consenting adults who apply. Parents or other guardians have the right to raise their children according to their own standards and beliefs, provided that the rights of the children are free from abuse and neglect are also protected. Adults, adult rights and responsibilities. Once individuals are presumed to have an adequate judgment to vote and so on a jury or in the military, they should be, they should have also be presumed to have sufficient judgment to decide their own purchase and use of alcohol, tobacco, firearms, cannabis, and engage in other activities currently restri uh, restricted by government due to age. Crime and justice, government force must be limited to the protection of the rights of individuals to life, liberty, and property, and government must never be permitted to violate these rights. Laws should be limited in their application to violations of the rights of others through force or fraud, or to uh, deliberate actions that place others in voluntary at significant risk of harm. Furthermore, we favor the repeal of all laws creating crimes without victims, such as gambling, the use of drugs for medicinal or recreational purposes, and consensual tracks transactions involving sexual services. We support restitution to the victim to the fullest degree possible at the expense of the criminal or the negligent wrongdoer. The constitutional rights of the criminally accused include due process, speedy trial, legal counsel, trial by jury, and the legal presumption of innocence until proven guilty must be preserved. We assert the common law right of juries to judge not only the facts, but also the justice of the law. We oppose the prose uh, prose uh, prosecutorial practice of overcharging in criminal prosecutions so as to avoid jury trials by intimidating defendants into accepting plea bargains. Additionally, we support the abolition of qualified immun uh, immunity so that law enforcement and prosecutors would be held legally accountable for misconduct that leads to wrongful uh, convictions or other acts of justice. Regarding the death penalty, we oppose the administration of the death penalty by the state. Self-defense, the only legitimate use of force is in self-defense of individual rights, life, liberty, and justly acquired property against aggression. This right inheres in the individual who may agree to be aided by any other individual or group. We affirm that the individual right recognized by the Second Amendment to keep and bear arms and oppose the pr uh, prosecution of individuals for exercising their rights of self-defense. Private property owners should be free to establish their own conditions regarding the presence of personal defense weapons on their own property. We oppose all laws at any level of government restricting, registering, or monitoring the ownership, manufacture, transfer of firearms, ammunition, or firearm activity. Economic liberty. Libertarians want all members of society to have abundant opportunities to achieve economic success. A free and competitive market allocates resources in the most efficient manner. Each person has the right to offer goods and services to others on the free market. The only proper role of government in the economic realm is to protect property rights, adjudicate disputes, and provide a legal framework in which voluntary trade is protected. All efforts by government to redistribute wealth or to control or manage trade are improper in a free society. Aggression, property and contract. Aggression is the use, trespass or invasion of the borders of another person's own resource, property, without the owner's consent or the threat thereof. We oppose all acts of aggression as illegitimate and unjust, whether committed by private actors or the state. Each person is the presumptive owner of his or her own body, self-ownership. And the right may be forfeited only as a consequence of committing acts of aggression. Property rights and external, and external scarce resources are determined in accordance with the principles of original appropriation or homesteading, whereby a person becomes an owner of an unowned resource by first use and transformation. Contract, whereby the owner consensually transfers ownership to another person and rectification, whereby an owner's property rights and certain resources are transferred to a victim of the owner's tort. 
trespass or aggression to compensate the victim. Justin, you muted yourself. You wanna, you, you wanna, okay. Sorry, I was trying to, I couldn't, I was trying to move something around. As respect for property rights is fundamental to maintaining a free and prosperous society, it follows that the freedom to contract to uh, obtain, retain, profit, uh, manage, or dispose of one's property must be upheld. Libertarians, would free property owners from the government restrictions on their rights to control and enjoy their property as long as their choices do not harm or infringe on the rights of others. Eminent domain, civil asset forfeiture, government limits on profits, gun rental production mandates, and governmental controls on prices of goods and services, including wages, rents, and interest, are abridgments of such fundamental rights. For voluntary dealings among private entities, parties should be free to choose with whom they trade and set whatever trade terms are mutually agreeable to the environment. Competitive free markets and property rights stimulate the technological innovations and behavioral change which is required to protect our environment and ecosystems. Private landowners and conservation groups have a vested interest in maintaining natural resources. Governments are unaccountable for damage done to the environment and have a terrible track record when it comes to environmental protection. Protecting the environment requires a clear definition and enforcement of individual rights and responsibilities regarding resources like land, water, air, and wildlife. Where damages can be proven and quantified in court of law, restitution to the injured parties must be required. Uh, energy and resources. While energy is needed to fuel a modern society, government should not be subjected to lose people like crazy. Can you kind of summarize a little more? One fool at a time, Tim. I mean, if they're bored, then hey, they can tell me they're bored. Uh, uh, where was I? Government financing and spending. Since all persons are entitled to keep the fruits of their labor, we oppose all government activity that consists of the forcible collection of money or goods from individuals in violation of their individual rights and strive for the eventual repeal of all taxation. To further that end, we call for the repeal of the income tax, the abolition of the Internal Revenue Service, and all federal programs and services not required under the U.S. Constitution. We oppose forcing employers to serve as tax collectors. We support any initiative to reduce or abolish any tax and oppose any increase on any tax reform for any reason. To the extent possible, we advocate that all public services be funded or allowed to be provided in a voluntary manner. Government debt. Government should not incur debt, which burdens future generations without their consent. We support the passage of a balanced budget amendment to the Constitution, provided that the budget is balanced exclusively by cutting expenditures and not raising taxes. Government employees. We favor repealing any requirement that one must join or pay dues to a union as a condition of government employment. We advocate replacing uh, defined benefit pensions with defined contributions. <laughs> as are commonly offered in the private sector so as not to impose debt on future generations without their consent. Money and financial markets. We favor free market banking with unrestricted competition among banks and depository institutions of all types. Markets are not actually free unless fraud is vigorously combated. Those who enjoy the possibility of profits must not impose risk of losses upon others, such as through government guarantees or bailouts. We support ending federal student loan guarantees and special treatment of student loan debt and bankruptcy proceedings. <clears throat> Individuals engaged in voluntary exchange should be free to use as money any mutually agreeable commodity or item. We support a halt to inflationary monetary policies 
and unconstitutional legal tender laws. Marketplace freedom. Libertarians support free markets. We defend the right of individuals to form commercial enterprises based on voluntary association. We oppose all forms of government subsidies and bailouts to business, labor, or any special interest. Government should not compete with private enterprise. We reject government charter of corporations. We call for separation of business and state. Licensing. Libertarians should support the right of every person to earn an honest and peaceful living through the free voluntary exchange of goods and services. Accordingly, we oppose occupational and other licensing laws that infringe on this right or treat it as a state granted privilege. We encourage certifications by voluntary association of professionals. Sex work. The Libertarian Party supports the decriminalization of prostitution. We assert that the right of consenting adults to provide sexual services to clients for compensation and the right of clients to purchase sexual services from consenting sex workers. Labor markets. Employment and compensation agreements between private employer and employees are outside the scope of government, and these contracts should not be encumbered by government-mandated benefits or social engineering. We support the right of government employers and employees to choose whether or not to bargain with each other or through a labor union, with each other through a labor union, excuse me. Bargaining should be free of government interference, such as a compulsory arbitration or imposing an obligation to bargain. Education, education is best provided by the free market, achieving greater equality, accountability, and efficiency with more diversity of choice. Recognizing that the education of children is a parental responsibility, we will restore authority to parents to determine the education of the children without interference from government. Parents should have control and responsibility of all funds expended for their child's, uh, their children's education. Healthcare. We support a free care, a free market healthcare system. Medical facilities, medical uh, providers, and medical products, including drugs, must be freely available in the marketplace without government restrictions or licenses. We recognize the government of individuals to determine the level of health insurance they want, if any, the level of health care they want, the care providers they want, the medicines and treatments they will use, and other aspects of their medical care, including end of life decisions. People should be free to purchase health care insurance, uh, excuse me, health insurance across state lines. We oppose governments either mandating or restricting voluntary access to medical treatments or procedures, including vaccines. Retirement and security income. Retirement planning is the responsibility of the individual, not the government. Libertarians would phase out the current government-sponsored social security system and transition to a private voluntary system. The proper and most efficient source of help for the poor is the voluntary efforts of private, private groups and individuals. We believe members of society will become even more charitable and civil society will be strengthened as government reduces its activity in this realm. Securing liberty. In the United States, constitutional limits on government were intended to prevent the infringement of individual rights by those in power. The only proper purpose of government, should it exist, is the protection of individual rights. The principle of non-initiation of force should guide relationships between governments. National defense. We support the maintaining of a efficient military to defend the United States against aggression. The United States should avoid both entangling alliances and abandon its attempts to act as a policeman for the world. We oppose any form of compulsory national service. Internal security and individual rights. Individual rights should not be curtailed, whether disaster or emergency or any other pretense. Intelligence agencies that legitimately seek to preserve the security of the nation must be subject to oversight and transparency. We oppose the government's use of secret classifications to keep from the public information that it, that it should have, especially that which shows the government has violated the law. We oppose the use of torture and other cruel and unusual punishments without exception. International affairs, American foreign policy, policy should emphasize peace with all nations entangling alliances with none. We should end the current U.S. government policies of foreign intervention, including military and economic aid. Tariffs, 
economic sanctions, and regime change. We recognize the right of all people to resist tyranny and defend themselves and their rights. We condemn the use of force and especially the use of terrorism against the innocent, regardless of whether such acts are committed by governments or by political or revolutionary groups. Free trade and migration. We support the removal of government impediments to free trade. Political freedom and escape from tyranny demand that individuals not be unreasonably constrained by government in the crossing of political boundaries. Economic freedom demands the unrestricted movement of human as well as financial capital across borders. Libertarians embrace the concept that all people are born with certain inherent rights. We direct the idea that a natural right can impose an obligation upon others to fulfill that right. We uphold and defend the right of every person regardless of the race, ethnicity, or other aspect of their identity. Government should neither deny nor bridge any individual's human, uh, individual's human right based upon sex, wealth, ethnicity, creed, age, national origin, personal habits, political pref preference, or sexual orientation. Members of private organizations retain their rights to set whatever standards of association they deem appropriate, and individuals are free to respond with ostracism, boycotts, and other free market solutions. Uh, representative government. We staunchly defend the right to petition government for redress of grievances and to express dissent. These rights are thwarted when government acts behind closed doors. We support election systems that are more representative of the electorate at the state federal and local governments, such as proportional representation, alternative voting systems, and explicit inclusion of none of the above on all, ballot, on all ballot, ballots. As private voluntary groups, political parties should be free to establish their own rules for nomination, nomination procedures, primaries, and conventions. We call for an end to any tax financed subsidies to call uh, to candidates or parties and the repeal of all laws that restrict voluntary financing of election campaigns. We oppose laws that effectively exclude alternative candidates and parties, deny ballot access, gerrymandered districts, or deny the voters their right to consider all alternatives. We advocate uh, initiative, referendum, recall, repeal, and oppose any effort to deny these options when used as popular checks on government. Self-determination. Whenever any form of government becomes destructive of individual liberty, it is the right of the people to alter, abolish, or withdraw from it and to agree to such new governments or none as to them shall seem most likely to protect their liberty. We recognize the right to political self-determination, including secession. Exercise of the right does not require permission from others. Omissions. In every political matter, we advocate the consistent application of the principle of non-initiation uh, non of coercion, physical force, or fraud. Our silence on any other particular government law, regulation, ordinance, directive, edict, control, regulatory agency, activity, or uh, mechanician should not be construed to mechanation, I guess, should not be construed to imply approval. And uh, that is it. Again, join Libertarian Party, lpillinois.org slash join. Donate to Libertarian Party, lpillinois.org. Click on donate. Thanks, Tim, for actually putting this together for me. Uh, or not Tim, I should say Charlie. Thank you very much, Charlie, putting this together for me. Uh, I didn't ask him to do it. Uh, I added a little, some other things in there, but... Thanks, Charlie. Thanks, college. Okay. Are you still there? Are you still there? Yeah. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Are you ready to take questions now? Yes. Okay. Hang on. I think, uh, all right. Um, do you want to unshare your screen there real quick? All right. All right, Margaret, yeah, I guess you got the first question, so go ahead. Um, do, would, does the Libertarian Party um, view AK-47s and similar um, assault weapons as, quote, personal defense weapon? And if so, 
why? Uh, I've never heard anybody, uh, the Libertarian Party, use that phrase in any sort of recent um, position. Uh, <laughs> Well, personal, would, defense, personal defense. Yes, I think they would believe uh, you can right have out of your thing. Yes, I believe libertarians can have AK. Should libertarian people should have AK forty sevens for personal use? Yes. Is that what else? What else, Margaret? Anything else? Who's got the next question? Come on, guys. All right, Justin. Why would I want to support a bunch of uh, libertarian candidates running for Crook County? <laughs> Why would you? Yes. Um, well, because uh, we are the uh, we are the we are the anti-establishment vote in Cook County. We are the anti-machine vote. We uh, we want to get the crooks out of crook county government. Um, the Democrats just want to keep putting more crooks there, and the Republicans uh, have no spine and just bring they just bring in former Democrats. Uh, so we are the actual you know dissent choice. We are the you know we are the choice for. Um, anti-establishment. We want to get crooks out of the Crook County government. Okay. We, wanna, we want to. We want the affirmation platform that I just read off to you uh, so tediously and like a kindergarten teacher. Um, is the program that our candidates want to implement that? So if you want of that or most of that vote for one of our candidates or all our candidates all right robert uh charlie you want to go ahead next yeah justin um when they set up the founding fathers set up the united states government they set up a system of checks and balances there's three entities of government and when the congress passes the law the only powers that exist that can veto one of those laws is the president or the Supreme Court. Now I read your, your document, you may you come along and you say a jury can do this. 12 people can nullify a law. And I don't know where you accrue the right to do so. You have no constitutional basis. You just made up some stuff and added it on to the United States Constitution. I've got to wonder, sir, if the people who wrote what's your this, question, anybody, Charlie? Do you have a copy of the Constitution? What's the question? Where is jury nullification provided for in the Constitution of the United States? Uh, it's provided for <clears throat> in the Ninth and Tenth Amendments. Would say what? It says you have a right to jury nullification. Sure. Would you read that to me please, at some point? You can read it yourself what the Ninth Amendment says. Um, uh, but yeah, just because it's not in the Constitution doesn't mean it's not a right. The only rights you have are in the Constitution, Charlie. Does that mean that before the 13th Amendment that people had a right to own slaves? When they were very explicit in determining the organization of government, Justin. Very explicit about this. Jury nullification is something that was a tradition that happened before the founding of the United States. It's what colonists did to keep the colonial powers in check. There is no reference to it in the US Constitution. Okay. There's no, it makes, there's a lot of things that con, the constitution doesn't make reference to like labor unions, but I don't think you anything wrong with labor unions. Oh, okay, okay. well, let me, let me, let me continue. What? Just one thing after, after now the, we have an assembly of 
we, we vote for elective representatives. They debate all these things. We go through this whole process of election. And then you have 12 people chosen. At, this, is, this is the logic of it. You have 12, I'll call them Jamokes, 12 people, no one has chosen, can nullify a law. You it, give them it, that. Let's say uh, Charlie Paydock is on trial for. Uh, let's say Charlie Twelve Paydock people is on trial for, for killing, killing a list. person. 12 people at random have as much authority as the U.S. Congress. So, which question am I answering again? Which is question? that logical, sir? Which question? What's your question, Charlie? This 12 people chosen at random have as much authority as the United States Congress. Why not? Sure, yes. They're, uh, yeah. Why not? If people want to nullify, like, so if Charlie Paydock gets arrested for murder and then during the trial, it's like, well, I don't think that the prosecutor's case is really holding up. I think Charlie may have done this in self-defense. Shit, you're right. Let's, let's, uh, you know, like that is, or let's say that Charlie Paydock is busted with cocaine. Charlie Paydock's got some cocaine. He's busted with it. Well, we're in the jury. And we're like, you know what? I think it's stupid that Charlie, he didn't do anything violent by having all this cocaine. Let's, let's, Let's let's not, you know, let's let Charlie go. That we, the jury has that power. I think the part the jury should do that sort of stuff to help out Charlie when when the odds are stacked against him. Justin, the jury has only power to mitigate the penalty of the law I broke. Says where in the Constitution does it say that? Where in the case law of the United States does it say that? That's all. All right, who's uh? We had a question in the chat uh, earlier, and I'm going to uh, ask it. What's your stance on prostitution, and will you work in the, to legalize the sex industry? This is a question from Robert. What is my stance on sex prostitution? Well, I agree with what the Libertarian Party's uh, platform is on the topic. Um, and how will I? My the, the second part was how will I do it? Will you work the legal slice of sex industry? Yeah, I mean, I will. Uh, I I I help put candidates on the ballot that hopefully they can you know or you know that run on that sort of thing so we can change the current laws. So yes, uh, my activism. Uh, would entail uh, working to legalize sex work. Okay, who's who's got the next question? Oh, come on, guys! You you normally this is very uh, open. <laughs> Corey, okay, Carrie, go ahead. Okay, a quick question and a two-parter. The quick question is: Does the Second Amendment allow people to have? Chemical, biological, and nuclear weapons. Okay, that's that's the quick question. Um, well, the two part question is: What if scientists discover there's an asteroid on in, in, on, in, on an orbit that will wipe out all or crashing the Earth and wipe out all life, and it will take an effort of of you know ten percent of the world of the world's output of goods and services to create a rocket to go and land on it, and it put, because you can't just blow it up because all the pieces will end up crashing the Earth anyway. You've got to go and land on it. Very carefully adjust the orbit so we'll miss Earth. Uh, how we you think you're going to get enough voluntary money to do that? And so say, yes. To, so how many questions are you asking? This is a two part question. This, this is this is part one of a two part question. Because you because there's no taxes, so you've got to you got to be able to voluntarily commit ten percent of their net of the net goods and services of the world to, to create this rocket to do this. The part two, which is really the lead into part two. Part two is. What if science tells us that the fossil fuels we are burning will wipe out all life on Earth, and the only way to do it is to cut the use by 90%, or you know, reduce the fossil fuel use by 90% over the next 10 years? 
how will you, you, you won't force people to do that though. So how you think people will voluntarily do that? Everybody will wait, will wait for somebody else to do it first. So how, right, you, so how, how, how what will happen to the earth? Okay, so the first question is, does the second amendment cover bar, uh, nuclear weapons and biological weapons? I doubt it, I don't think so. Um, your second question was, does, how, how are we going to stop an asteroid from? It requires more, if you only allow voluntary contribution to the cause, do you think, I, do you think you're really going to get that much, that much to do it if it's going to require 10% of the, of the goods and services of the world to build these rockets to go and land on the asteroid and deflect it? Well, if people care about blowing up the asteroid. You can't blow it up. Earth, are you going to let me answer the questions? Okay. So, I mean, if people, I mean, I don't know. I can't predict the future. So these weird scenarios are kind of, but okay. I mean, if, if, uh, if, um, if people, people have a vested interest in surviving. So if there's an asteroid coming at you, I'm sure people will voluntarily think of ways to try to knock it down. Um, I don't know if it'll be better if it's better to do that or I mean I wouldn't want the government to seize resources and whatever um, and then of course that principle would apply to what was the third one you asked the, the, the third one is the only way we can avoid global climate change is to reduce the use of fossil fuels and nobody's voluntarily cutting back on that so that kind of Kind of eliminates your idea that people will do it voluntarily. Okay, so um, do I think that people will do it? People will. They aren't. I am. I mean, I don't drive a car. Uh, I don't have children. I. Um, but that's not enough. One person is not enough. A million people is not enough. Overall, but the population as a whole is not is not cutting their resources enough to save the planet. Voluntarily. How do you know what the right amount of resources is to, to cut? I, 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 it, it's not certain exactly how much, but it's definitely we're not doing enough. We know that for sure. How do you know we're not doing enough? If you, if you, if you, if you just want to say you don't believe in it, that's fine. You don't believe, don't believe the asteroid's going to hit us either. That doesn't do us any good when the asteroid hits. I didn't say anything about not believing you. I'm just asking how you know that. To scientists, be scientists have studied it and, they, and I believe in them. Which so scientists say that if we don't reduce our fossil fuels by <clears throat> a lot more than we are, that the planet will will be will end up becoming uninhabitable. Well, I believe it's corporations that are making uh, you know battery powered vehicles and right, uh, but they're not they're not cutting they're not cutting the fossil fuel use enough to keep the planet from being becoming uninhabitable voluntarily. Any of them with some coercion is still not doing it. So without the coercion, well, I am against uh, coercion. Uh, so I hope that answers your questions. Well, we are, there is some coercion already, and it's still not doing it enough to, to save the planet. <clears throat> we need a lot more coercion than we have already in order in order to cut the use enough to save the planet. So you can say you don't believe in global warming, and that's, and that's that. But that's well, who's, I didn't say I didn't believe in global warming. Okay, well, you can, you can say you, you can believe people will do it voluntarily, and they aren't. Again, it's, 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 kind of, it's kind of pointless. Well, what are you doing to stop global warming? I'm voting for candidates that will, that will require people to stop, using, to stop bringing some of the fuel. I set my thermostat at 60, 60 degrees in the wintertime, 58 degrees. Do you drive? Yes. Do you have children? Um, no, I, I adopted one, but I did not have any of my own. Okay. Is that your ecological policy? Don't have children? It ain't mine, but I mean, I Is don't. Is that what your I party's don't... recommending? No, I'm just asking. Uh, I mean, he's saying. I'm, I'm he's, not arguing. I'm, I've, I'm just seeing what he does to help fight global warming. Charlie, do you do you have a car? I I I I, I, no. I, I my electricity I contracted from a re, from a green from a renewable source. You know, I, I pay my I, I, my provider is a renewable source. 
So I do burn a little bit of gas for heating. So, uh, Tim, what's the deal with uh, are we going on to more questions, or is this like a, what's going on? No, it's just it's just there's not a lot of people asking questions. I'm going to ask you one. Do you think it's moral to use fossil fuels? Um, I think uh, if other alternatives exist that are better, then at some much. point um, it it would it would probably be immoral. Um, probably not right now. So um, I uh, I think I and I've talked about this in the past at the college. I think that it's a transitionary sort of thing. I think that um, there's you know, hopefully they're working on better ways of uh, producing energy and having better, you know, fuel efficient vehicles. Um, what was your, is that your question? Does that answer your question, Tim? To a large degree it was. Charlie, you're next. Go ahead. Charlie, you got your hand up. Yeah, all right. Okay, Justin, uh, I was wondering, does, does the Libertarian Party believe that any problems exist in our society? I mean, let me, the very real one, and everyone knows about this, is that for the past several decades, there's been an increasing concentration of wealth <coughs> in the top 1% or 10%. At the same time, about 100 million people in the United States are living at or below the poverty level. I don't perceive any solution in your party's advances to bring about some solution to this, unless you are in favor of increased social stratification. Is that the position of your party, that social stratification should go on unchecked? Um, if social stratification is being done by means of fraud or theft or coercion or violence, certainly we, we would not support that sort of stratification. If people are, uh, if people become wealthy by, uh, you know, honest means, I see no problem with them keeping as much as that money as possible. So you're not going to do anything for the have-nots. No, I think that uh, I think nothing. That I'm not. What do you mean by I'm not? Like me personally. Your party. My party. Well, our. I already mentioned what our party believes in the talk. Um, do you want to help the have-nots? Well, libertarians have several, you know, uh, positions on the welfare state. There's some of them support a, a, a universal basic income. Some of them support a negative income tax. Some of them support a bottom-up welfare state as opposed to the state uh, top-down welfare state as we have it exist today. Um, um, there's also, uh, you know, there's also abolition of the welfare state and complete reliance on mutual aid and voluntary association. So there's several different um, approaches that libertarians take on this map. Among your approaches is, uh, in, you ever thought about an income tax on the rich? Yeah, I think we should, if there, well, if we are to have an income tax, it should probably be 0.01% or, or maybe even 0.001% or maybe even 0.000001% on people maybe making over a million dollars. Why? Yeah. I mean, that's a compromise position. Um, that's going to help people? Well, how much I, money I, are you going to get? Well, you can help people without... How is, is this... We tax income now. Do poor, do, does that help people now? Um, uh, you shouldn't be taxing people's income because it's it's theft. Um, people work for that stuff, and then that's the fruits of their labor. Charlie, you're a labor guy. You believe in people 
you know, the working man. So I, I find it kind of crazy how you support the government stealing by force uh, their their paychecks. Uh, and I apply that principle. I, I don't think any, you know, if you if you make your money honestly, you should keep your money across the board, rich, poor, whatever. So forget the poor. No, I didn't say anything about forgetting the poor, Charlie. This is what you do. You, you straw man people. Um, I, I tell you several things and you're just like, oh, well, uh, uh, uh. Charles, the straw man builder, Paydock. Charles, a straw man. All right. Okay, now we got some more people asking questions. Okay, Margaret, you're next. Okay, do, do libertarians want to abolish public education? Um, some want to abolish public education. Some want to, uh, some believe in giving parents greater control um, instead of, you know, like the, the tax money following the ground. Um, <laughs> there's many libertarians that are that are that work in public education. So I would say some do and some don't. But it's a policy of the, of the uh, party. That's one of the policies of the party. Well, I can reread what our policy plank was. Um, but uh, I think it was lines of parents. That's a parental responsibility. Um, so, I mean, theoretically, I guess, uh, local, some, you know, libertarians would be fine with local school boards existing. Um, some do some, you know, um, like I said, not all libertarians are against public education, but a lot or for abolishing education, public education, rather. They're not against education in principle, just um some libertarians don't think the government should be doing that okay all right is it was that it margaret yeah i'm saving my heavy fire for later okay <laughs> margaret gillette you're next just a quick question does the libertarian party in any way address the minimum wage and or recognition of the disparity in a corporation with the CEO making $500,000 a year and the janitor making uh, $12,000 a year. Is, that, would, is there any position on the part of your party to discuss the inequity? Is that CEO worth that sum of money when the janitor is keeping the building warm and cool and opening it and is making a pittance. Where do you all speak of such situations? Okay, so there's a few questions in there. Do we speak of disparities between CEOs and the janitor? I'm sure there are some uh, individual candidates that may have talked on that. I haven't seen any recent communications from the party that touches on that. What was your first question? Or one of your first questions? Uh, what is your stand on the minimum wage? And if you do have a stand one way or the other, what would you consider to be a minimum wage in Cook County? So libertarians are uh, against the minimum wage. The minimum wage would probably be $0. Um, some libertarians may disagree with that, so. Um, but I think it wasn't what I said in the presentation was that that's a uh, that's an agreement that's a that's a contract or that's an agreement between the employer and the employee. <laughs> Okay, uh, is that was that it, Margaret? All right, Sharon, you're next. Um, okay, I 
I, I might have two quick questions if that's all right. But if the first one goes on, then I'll save the second one. Uh, the first one uh, recently it was mentioned that you, that you didn't or libertarians didn't approve of money being gained through fraudulent or deceitful actions. Um, in response to somebody else's question, I don't remember the exact question. Um, so if the, my question is, how would that be dealt with under a, a libertarian society? Um, if somebody is manufacturing, say, a food product and, um, you know, just putting in ingredients that you, you might not expect, I mean, they, they could just really put in anything and, and um, how, and, but somebody finds out that maybe this product is bad for you or it doesn't contain what, what it was advertised. How would that be dealt with under a libertarian? System? Well, if it's, if it's got product, that's not, if it's, got, yeah. if it's got ingredients or whatever that aren't advertised and they're harmful, uh, then definitely they should be, um, held accountable in court. Um, if they didn't know and they find out, they should make it. If you know, if a company finds out that I threatened my mother's job, lying because you put that in my mouth. Please mute if you're not talking. I did, Robert. We just muted you because of the background noise, but please feel free to unmute and answer questions if you want. Okay, who's next with questions? Um, oh, I, I don't think uh, you said. Sorry, I'm I'm in the middle. I was in the middle of her. And I'm sorry about that. Go ahead. Of thought. Uh, I'm sorry. What What was the? Uh, I lost my. Question, well, yeah. How would that be dealt with? So there would be a court system. I I think with... that uh, yeah arbitration is you know I think that me personally I think that uh, you know from a property rights perspective the environment should be you know protected. It's um, pollution is a form of trespassing. It's theft of clean resources um if you are a if you're polluting you are invading uh my personal uh be held accountable for that um so that's yeah i mean i think that that you know that's it applies for I think you know most libertarians would not disagree with that. And as a matter of principle, any sort of time there's damage caused, we would want restitution. So so if some so if, you know if somebody had a food product or a faulty device and somebody was harmed, perhaps even killed as a result of that product, uh, then there would be some sort of recourse. I would hope yeah, I'm sure, yeah. And then the and then Oh, wait, well, wait, well, let me ask you, yeah, this is a secondary question. So if there is a, a court system of some sort, you know, who's paying for that or who's participating? <coughs> uh, well, courts ideally would be uh, for everybody um, and courts can be paid for by several different means through taxes, sales tax, property tax. Um, voluntary taxation uh fees um uh you know however else you pay for courts okay um, one way one way that a lot of uh one one um method i've heard i uh this is ayn rand's idea is to um when you make a transaction you make part of your uh part of your transaction includes a cost to pay for arbitration if that were to ever happen. Um, so okay. you make, a, uh, you make a, a deal and part of the deal is if there's arbitration, we'll pay for it. And that's how we're going to enforce our contract. <clears throat> okay, so, so the libertarians, are, you're just essentially, you don't like income tax. Is that it? But you're okay with other oh, uh, we taxation. Uh, I mean, there's. I think there's a difference between saying taxation is theft and then like, um, 
thinking of ways for taxes to be less uh, burdensome or less uh, imposing or even taxing things that, for example, um, you can't really get out of paying an income tax. But if you tax, um, and of course I'm not advocating for these types of taxes, but I'm just using it as an example. Um, I don't have a car, so I don't pay the gas tax that helps pay for the roads or, or whatever. Um, so that, that sort of tax, that sort of tax like that is less coercive. I, I can choose to not pay that tax by not buying gasoline. Now, if I have a car, I, I kind of have to buy the gas. gas right. Or, yeah. Um, but do you, you, but you know, even though you don't have a car yourself, I, I guess you do benefit from having streets, don't you? Sure. Goods and services. That's how goods and services are delivered to people. Um, and roads obviously are, are one thing that people like to point to, uh, for, um, uh, legit purposes the government does uh, ways to justify the state's existence is we need somebody to maintain roads um, and libertarians are not opposed to roads um, like I said a gas tax is one way that you can fund the roads uh, and, and it's only the you know and ideally the people who pay uh, you know the, the gas tax pays to fund the roads um, and only, you know, if you pay the gas tax, therefore you're funding what you're, what you're using, right? Um, and there's also tolls, there's also privacy of roads. I grew up on a private road. Um, so there's, there's several different options. Deidre McCloskey, our comptroller candidate at our last LP meeting, um, renowned academic, she talked about privatizing roads and it was pretty awesome. So, I mean, there's a lot of interesting ideas have on roads. Okay. All right, I guess that's, that's it for me for now. Okay, uh, Margaret, go ahead. Yeah, um, I would like to know how you discriminate against, or how you determine what is public health and what is individual health and uh, do the libertarians want to support public health? And if so, what kind of public health and how much? Because there's a whole bunch of things under that umbrella of public health. So um, what, it, what is the party's uh, stand on that? Um, so the Libertarian Party thinks that you are responsible for your own health care um, libertarians support you using whatever treatments, seeking out whatever doctors, making whatever choices, um, making choices, informed choices uh, at your own will. That's what libertarians support, if that's what you mean by no, I want to know what you mean by public health. Do you, does well, libertarians I, have a concept of public health? And if people should have to support that with tax money or not? Libertarians would be opposed to any sort of public financing of any sort of health. Okay. So you're opposed to the sewer and water treatment centers then? Because that's public health. Um, well, I was, well, if we're going to, okay. Um, I thought you were being more specific about hospitals and, and medical. I'm, public health is public health. Sewers and water treatment are public health. Uh, um, uh, I don't see too many libertarians talking about abolishing sewers or anything like that. Um, and I'm so, sure there's been libertarians have been elected to sewer district boards. And so where do they draw the line? So for example, you've got sewer and water treatment programs, and then you also have public health programs with immunizations and to prevent the spread of contagious and infectious diseases. You have public 
health departments that um, give uh, primary care to uh, children who don't otherwise have access because they don't, the families aren't, don't have the money to um, deal with health problems. So wh where do you draw that line? Do you think that, that, that people shouldn't be able to get health care for their children if they can't afford it? No, I think libertarians want, uh... everybody had the best health care I'm sorry, I missed your, you cut out. I didn't, I didn't get what you said. So libertarians want people to have the best health care. Um, it sounds like you think that only health care exists if the government is providing it or something or. That's uh, not what I said. But um, yes, we want people to be healthy. We want people to, to have access to medical care. Uh, but we just think the government is a doesn't do it very well. Um, the pandemic uh, is a good example of that. Well, uh, that's because we had a royal fuck up as a president. But well, I don't know how the president, which president in charge, was going to stop the spread of you know. Is it going to make a real big difference? Well, it he uh, could have because other places did. Yeah, Sweden, they didn't lock down and they uh they they seemed to do pretty okay. No, they didn't. They had their they had death okay. rate was huge compared to, to the other Scandinavian countries. The other Scandinavian countries had 45 per hundred thousand and they had 828. I mean, I don't know the numbers, but it was like that. It was exponentially larger death rate than the other Scandinavian countries. I don't know where you got your figures. I got mine from public from the World Health Organization. Hmm. Okay. Well, uh, health. Well, yeah, I mean, you heard me read the platform. Um, I can cite that again. Uh, but we wouldn't support, like, if you know, universal health care. We would be against, um, <laughs> you know, all that sort of stuff. All, all that sort of stuff. That's my question. Go ahead. All right. Who else? Yeah, has got I think it's Tim, Tim, Tim left. So Charlie, go ahead. Uh, all right. Uh, Tim is or uh, Justin, it, it, it's a party platform reading it. It appears to me that it was something written by a number of CEOs in a boardroom. Uh, and a few years ago, I met with a congressman and he said, Chuck, you know, we got to watch out for the little guy. Well, I'm a little guy. And I didn't see much in there that helps us out. You know, we can't have unions. We just we're going to go down and lose our minimum wage even start earning less we won't have health care you work for minimum wage they won't have safety and health yeah. anymore because you're going to get rid of that agency i i hey, i don't Charlie. understand how you plan to think that this is going to appeal to any segment of the population there's nothing in there for the little guy. Is that your question? Yeah, why, why, why are you locked into this creed, these accords that haven't changed in how many years? Oh, this, I'm not. Are you become a party of what doctrine or something? Years. You can't look. You can't repress. Every campaign should have fresh issues and solutions to problems. Listen to candidates. What's the and question? you're still reading to us the party platform. What? Which you, which you copied and pasted for me, Charlie. Thank you. Yeah, and I read it in the process. But it's not an issue. What are the 10 top issues confronting our society? 
So the question is, what are the top 10 issues confronting our society? Yeah, why is this document written lopsided? Okay. It's so the most got... lopsided thing I've ever seen. It's all for one, a few select the 1%. Why would I vote for the 1%? So we got three questions here. We've got hey, whatever you want. Why would I vote for the one percent? Is the one question. Yeah. I'm sorry. What were your other questions? Why are you locked into this archaic creed, like a religion? I'm not okay to answer that question. I am not locked into this archaic creed. So what was the other? And and then why is it lopsided? Yeah, it clearly is. I don't know what you mean by lopsided. We can't. You're against opposed labor. You're against minimum wage. You're opposed to occupational safety and health. You're you're in you're opposed to any sort of economic relief for the poor and needy. Do you want me to go on? Every single paragraph in there. <laughs> I said there's nothing in there for me. So I'm sorry. What was your question? <laughs> yeah. Why? Why? Why can't you? Why? The other parties at least aim towards the middle. Why can't we head Anybody towards the middle? Towards the middle? <laughs> I think that I think the libertarian platform is pretty much in the middle. They pretty uh, I think it's got a lot of stuff that most people can can dig. They to can. answer the question. <laughs> I I I said I can't find anything in it. That oh, it wasn't written by CEOs. It was written by like you know working class schmoes like myself, who uh, volunteer to write this stuff on committees. The Libertarian Party is perhaps like one of the most working class uh, parties there is. I mean, we we get nothing from any corporation. We get nothing from any unions. Uh, we we. We don't get any, we are a bunch of working class schmo. We're very passionate and volunteer our time. So this is nothing, there's nothing, all this crap that you hear about libertarians being like, you know, just corporate shills or whatever is nonsense. Well, that's what I don't fully understand. What do you mean? What don't you understand? Yeah, if you're the party of the poor and needy and then you don't want any relief for the poor and needy. That, wait a minute. Who said we didn't want it's any gotta be one or the support. other, man? Libertarians it's gotta be one or the other. Relief. What? I just think the government's really bad at relieving the poor. Well, how is it gonna happen? You think the CEO's gonna find Jesus in his heart? <laughs> oh, the CEOs usually give people jobs. That's probably the you best. You think those, those barons, money. those He's guys fine. from the turn of the cent Carnegie is gonna what? Come Carnegie, on. Didn't Carnegie build libraries? I'm in a real world, his, man. His art and stuff like that. Doesn't didn't Carnegie give a lot of his money away and promote? And they worked him to death. And, and learning and stuff. Yeah, and one employee a week died in each of his mills. Well, let me tell you how you want to know how many people the United States government kills on a weekly basis? None. And I'm not going to listen to that. Absolutely can't. If that's it, I really don't like that talk. U.S. government. And I really don't care. Has a military that. That that's off the record, pal. No, the government in the United States. And believe you me, the first time I heard that, I was shocked. Dude, the government is it's taking not all our money and killing. It's a horrible concept, and you should be ashamed of yourself right for announcing it. Okay. That is terrible. It's what? a free speech forum, Charlie. Hey, no, it's Charlie, not. I like how Charlie not that, mad hey, that like the government. No, absolutely, people. categorically not. I triggered. And I'm not going to listen to it. Telling me all like how the government's great, and then I point out that he that it kills people, and he. No, he, you're absolutely off. The, man, are you off on this? Hey, I don't are you telling me the government doesn't kill people? Yeah, I don't find that appealing. Your party. That what anybody on the right, Charlie? If anything, I thought opposing war was something me and you could really get. Get get behind. Now I talk about how the government kills people, and all of a sudden, no, I've like told you, you're a to drop that. Okay, if you don't want to drop it, get lost. You oh, get sure. lost. 
It lost. lost. All right, I guys. told you to drop that. That's a terrible thing to say. Oh, the thing is, clearly, it's not censorship. That's what's wrong with the fucking party. It's stupid. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry. We're, we're anti right. war. Finally, we're getting Try some. Try to offend your sensibilities there, Charlie. Well, uh. Personal attack. Uh, okay. Uh, Jason and uh, Daniel Robin, you guys uh, want to ask questions? I know you guys are libertarians. Uh, Anybody else have a question at this point? All right, Justin. Um, oh, God, I, I'm sorry. I, I don't have one either. All right, shall we go to rebuttals, gentlemen? Sharon, Sharon, raise your hand. Sharon, unmute Sharon. Go ahead and ask your question. Yeah, one more question. So, um, and I don't know, maybe you covered this in your talk, but I, I, and I'm not sure what the libertarian um, stand is on this, but... Um, when we have services like um, uh, fire and police and emergency uh, services, well, well, let's just say fire, for instance, you know, fire department. And, and right now that's, uh, you know, those are things that are funded normally through taxes. Although if you're out in a rural area, you might be serviced by a volunteer fire department. Um, but how would a libertarian society handle that? I mean, if, if I have a house, if I own a house, should I, would I have to subscribe to a fire service to get, uh, you know, to get my house um, attended to if I had a fire or would this be something that would be covered by some sort of tax? I personally am not opposed to uh, governments, local governments, you know, having a fire department. I know some people have talked about private, you know, privatized the, the fire department or whatever. I'm not one of them. Um, but uh, there is certainly, uh, you know, e e you know, private fire, private private police, that sort of thing. A lot of libertarians do support those sort of things. Um, um, but I am not opposed to the, to the government. I mean, if the government is to provide services, it's basic stuff like, uh, you know, courts and protection of, uh, you know, protections against uh, theft and fraud and murder and stuff like that. So, um, again, libertarians are, have several different, uh, it's a spectrum, as I think I saw somebody in the chat say. Uh, so, I mean, there's, they have different specifics on what they want to do. I personally am not opposed to local governments providing basic services. But, you know, if there's all these different perspectives, you know, how, how would we get uh, uh, anything done? It, you know, we need some sort of consistency, I think, to... The consistent measure for libertarians is, does it make the government smaller? Does it make the government more efficient? Does it make the government uh, does it decentralize government power? So as long as you can have a wide range of things, but that's usually the overarching principle of whether it's something libertarians would accept. Justin, I'd like, I got one more question. Yeah. I, have a, I, have a, I, have a, I have a question, Tim. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. Tim, Bob. Bob, go ahead. Yeah, uh, Justin, um, I can't remember if you already went over the, um, how would you uh, fund public education? And uh, do you think that uh, people should be allowed to, you know, have like perhaps vouchers and uh, send their kids to school where they choose, even if it's a religious school. Uh, what do you think about? That? I agree. I think I think uh, I think vouchers. Um, I think that the money, you know, mo the taxpayer money is for the students. It's not for the schools. It's not for the people. It's for the students. So. One way we can reform the current system is to uh, allow 
uh, parents who take that money um, that would go to, you know, on their education and they can use it to, you know, to go to a, you know, there's, there's secular private schools, but any private school of their choosing or um, even Milton Friedman doesn't oppose, you know, a, you know, public schools, really. Uh, I think in, in Capitalism Freedom, he talks about, you know, it can be kind of like, you know, like the, you know, you, you can have, you still have a public option sort of uh, if you wanted something like that. Um, but yeah, I, I think that, uh, yeah, libertarians would support that sort of stuff or charter schools as well. Uh, yeah, all sorts of options to give parents better control. How, how do, oh. Go ahead. Who's who's next? Who? Sharon, you were uh, muted. Yeah. Go ahead, Sharon. Okay. Would the would the schools um, uh, be have some level of regulation so that um, you know you know that uh, a, a child well is supposed to get you know reasonable education. Um, I'm just sort of imagining this this patchwork quilt of, you know, anybody could open a school and, you know, if you can talk people into sending your kids there, you can do that and you can make some money maybe. Um, but, you know, you as a parent, it would be kind of a nightmare trying to figure out what schools are, you know, uh, what schools are doing what every semester or every year. So your question is, is, um, Would there be basic requirements on education provided? Um, I trust that, that parents can choose schools that they think has the best curriculums and that those schools, you know, and schools that have the best results. I think that we will know what those schools wow. are. Yeah. I, I just, you know, I just think of uh, places like, um, uh, I just think, you know, uh, anybody would be able to open up a school. I could open up a school and claim to be able to teach children something. And if I did a, a good enough job advertising, I'd have people sending their children to me. And, um, you know, I, I frankly would not be a very good instructor probably. Well, if you weren't a good instructor, I'm sure parents would recognize that and you're... Maybe, maybe a year later or two years too late or something. You know, if children are growing up, they need, they need, uh, they grow up fast. You, you know, you can't just, um, you know, think about things too long, you know, and, and then change course. You know, well, how would I know until after a year or so is gone? <laughs> you know, it's really bad. Yeah, well, would you be willing would you willing to be sued by the uh, for service? You have a horrible connection I there. I think you would. Oh. I can't hear anything, Bob. Uh, but I didn't hear anything you said. Oh. Okay, sorry. Um, I would be, I, would, I think most libertarians would be against regulations uh, for the schools. Well, I think Bob was saying, I, I heard the, the word Sue, maybe he was saying that as a, as a person opening my own school, how would I feel, you know, I'd be open, I'd be a target for suits, you know, if, if parents yeah. weren't happy with me. I mean, it just, just seems to be like, it was just the That's cool. nightmare yeah. clogging up the courts and, you know, things go on forever. And then in the mean, meanwhile, you know, you still got to get your kid educated. Well, I think that we don't want to clog up the courts and I don't, I can't, I won't be able to follow what the different schools are doing is not a very good argument against the stat, is not a very good argument for the status quo. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess, you know, libertarians generally would be against, uh, it, you know, any sort of, you know, curriculum. All right, um, Carrie, go ahead. I just have a quick question. Do you, um, 
does the Libertarian Party recognize bankruptcy either for individuals and or for corporations? Maybe I missed it, but I, I don't remember anything about it. Um, I think it said something about uh, not excluding certain industries from bankruptcy and stuff like that. Um, that's actually a pretty good question. Um, um, I've never really thought about it because for one, bankruptcy is not really something I've ever had to participate in. Um, but, you know, contracts should be enforced, I suppose. And, but I guess you can, hopefully we can try to renegotiate contracts and terms and stuff like that. Um, well, this was specific, specifically for the last question where a bunch of parents send their kids to my school for, for a year and I teach them nothing. And so they try and sue to get their money back at the end of a year, but I've already spent it all. So I've got nothing. Can you sue like if so the Chicago public schools do a really bad job. I we're, not talking, we're not talking about Chicago public schools. We're talking about I set up my school and then people and then I, and I collect these vouchers and I spend the vouchers and I don't teach the kids anything. Yeah, we're talking about money well, but the point I'm trying to make is schools arguably public schools arguably don't teach people anything already. I'm not talking about public schools. Um, and don't change the subject. Is there, can you, is there recourse to go and sue the school for not teaching your kids? Maybe privatizing schools will finally give more parents recourse over and control and you can hold shitty schools accountable if they violate contracts the private, or the private, they don't the private, provide good services. The private school, just, you sue them, you just go out of business and, that, and that's the end of it. Public schools, at least, they're still there. They can work on getting better next year, but for the private school, just just turns it back and says, tough, bye, I'm gone. So no, the private school does not have as much harder situation. Well, public schools, if the public school doesn't teach anybody, you can't force, you can't actually shut down the public do, school. Actually things do change. The state, the state will step in and, and, and take over and the state has, you know, a larger group, a larger government or, or government order has stepped in and taken over school districts to fix them. I mean, it may not be perfect, but it's more than you've got with this private school. The guy just said, closes up his door, moves to another state and that's it. So you got no recourse at all. No recourse at all. So the guy spent all the money, moves to the, he's got nothing of value you can sue him for. Do a school for doing bad job, and they go out of business. I think that is recourse. Well, but he goes to another state and does the same thing there. <laughs> okay, well there. maybe he doesn't. I mean, well maybe he. But the, point, but the point is, there's no recourse. The I don't there's know. There's no recourse when with the public school. The school is still there. And it, it, it will, uh, it may not, it may still be bad, but it will, it will it be it less bad, bad next year. But it's still there. And I, you I were think forced to pay for it. It'll be bad. less bad. It will be less bad the next Government year because there's public attention because, to it. Because at least we need one bad choice that you have no option to get out of. I, I think You're making I think, a really good argument for this. Yeah, I think one of the, the key thing though with these these uh, private schools that that could be opened by anyone, I guess there there wouldn't be any any uh restrictions on them they could do whatever so you could have and i could just see this happening it, you know it's just a free-for-all all kinds of people opening of schools and and doing crappy jobs and not being responsible and and not being accountable and it how is that any different than what we have now i i you know what there's at least an attempt at a at a, a basic education there's so some there's attempt an attempt at regulation. And, you know, and, they don't. But, but not, you won't, but we but won't they, allow others to attempt. They're not perfect, but it, but it's, it's a system that is making the effort. And I think maybe they're going in the wrong direction with the, with the vouchers instead of, you know, focusing on, you know, the basic schools and getting those up to, up to par. Honestly, yeah, public schools, especially in a ur ur big urban uh, city, is pretty crappy. But I mean, I think it beats, you know, having a handful of flyby nights moving in and, you know. 
so what's so who, who else has got questions okay charlie's got another one charlie go ahead yeah um justin before i logged into the college i watched a documentary about this in buffalo new york they had a place called love canal and the company came in and polluted the land with toxic and nobody knew it all the people started getting sick and one mother and mothers got together and then they discovered that mm -hmm. this private sector free market company had polluted the land actually before that amazingly enough the company had polluted the land and closed down the factory and amazingly enough they sold that property to the school district yeah. and they didn't tell them mm -hmm. they sold the land that they were planning the school district <laughs> land that was poisoned all the children that went to the school now the amazing thing is not only did this is the unique situation they found there are like 50 other sites like this what's your 50 question, other Charlie? sites around the united states and now i come to a lecture that that guy tells me the government is no good and the free sector capitalists are okay I, I help me decide this. I got, I got so some Charlie, conflicting information here. So Charlie, there you are again with the straw man. I never said any of that stuff. It's clearly your doctor, your your policies were for the private sector business community I've without regulation. Said, you, I might did I I read that incorrectly. Did you miss? You don't like said? regulation. Did you miss the part where I said that I think that protect the environment? Did you miss that part? Did you miss the part where I said that? Yeah, I, I, I like to know what stopped the company. Did you miss the what, part where I said that the company was doing just killing the clean what? air and the clean resources? Did you miss? I, I must have missed it. Corrected you in favor of now telling me that I don't believe what you know. I believe something else. Let's let's stick to this group. You don't want regulation. That company was able to do that site absent regulation. Who says I don't want regulation? I Your think party is totally opposed Charlie. to I don't regulation. Think you're allowed to kill people. I'm for that. I'm for regulations against murder. Uh, against uh, murder. I don't think people should steal. So I'm I'm for regulations against theft. I don't think people should pollute because that is destruction of pro of property. So, I mean, where you, where you say I'm against uh, regulations is incorrect, Charlie. Well, how do they get redressed from that company? We have courts. Um, the Department of Justice. So, wait a minute. You're telling me the government. The, well, does the government protect the environment or they don't, Charlie? What is it? Well, you don't want regulations. Charlie, what did I no libertarian you that it's a ago, favor of a minute ago. ecological you? regulations. You're telling me I told you one thing, and now you're telling me that I that I that you're telling me what I believe that it's not true. You're 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 telling me you're telling me what I believe uh, <coughs> when I've already told you that I believe the opposite. This is called you're oh. strawmanning me, Charlie. Do you have a real question or are you just being or you know are you just being silly right now? I have a question for you, no. Justin. Okay, Justin. You didn't answer the question. How do you deal with that companies? I've already, that do I've, that? Already I've already answered this question in more than one way. Regulations or not, do they regulate them? So um. Oh boy. Let me recapitulate something I already said four or five times already. Go ahead, Justin. I was being sarcastic. 
I mean, Charlie's well, just, well, Charlie, I already told you, like, already in this, in this, your, over the course of this exact question, what I believe. So you know, I'm not going to repeat it again, dude. I'm, you're, you're straw manning everything I say. You do this all with everything. Hey, Charlie, do you believe that, do you believe in locking people in gulags? Charlie, is that an issue in this campaign? People. What do you call a modern factory? Is okay. there is questions or what? Are we going to do rebuttals or what? I think I got one more question for you, Justin. And this is kind of direct. Would, would you go with me to a Toastmasters meeting soon? Um, if I'm available, sure. Okay, and good. I, and I and I can get there. I don't have a car, so. Well, we'll have to uh, make arrangements for it. That's exactly what I wanted to hear because I think it would uh, benefit you and your cause quite a bit. Um, anyway, enough said. All right, let's go to rebuttals. Who's got a rebuttal tonight? I invite Daniel Robin and Nico Satsuis and anybody. Any other libertarians on the call uh, to... Margaret, you uh, gotta, are you doing a rebuttal, Margaret? Do rebuttals. Okay, okay. So I got a rebuttal. I got Margaret. All right. Margaret, who else? I'd like to get some of these other libertarians in here, too, if we can. Do I get a half hour rebuttal if nobody else wants <laughs> Well, we're gonna. I think we're gonna go about maybe ten minutes or so. Daniel, you want to do one? Oh, ten minutes, please. Uh, to rebut uh, the prior questions, but not to rebut the main speaker. No, no, that's fine. It's this is an open forum now. Um, these are rebuttals. These are short mini. Say speakers. whatever you want. Okay, you can say whatever you want. Whether you want to put in a good, uh, good, uh, a good thing for the Libertarian Party. Right now, I got Margaret, Charles, I got Daniel, then Daniel Rubin, uh, Ro Robin. Yes, sir. Okay. And, uh, Nico, you want to do one? How about you, Christina? And I know we got Robert down there, so if you guys want to jump in. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give everybody about 10 minutes, and if anybody else wants to jump in, I'm going to go Margaret, Charles. Oh, okay. You want to do one, Bob? Yeah, I'll try if you can hear me. Uh, we can hear you, Bob. Um, okay. okay, we can hear you now. All right. Um, anybody else? Okay, so the way we're going to do is we're going to do Margaret, Daniel Rubin, Bob, and then Charlie. Okay, I'm going to put 10 minutes on the clock. Uh, and you guys, when you're ready, just go right ahead. Um, okay, I'm gonna just start with, um, I, I'm gonna divide it kind of into two parts because there's a lot of issues here. I don't think an AK-47 is a personal defense weapon unless you're in a war zone. So um, in terms of, of uh, government services, everybody, y'all are saying that the, that the uh, government does a really bad job of taking care of people. Now I'm over 65 and I started getting social security when I was 66. Social security in this country has lifted an enormous number of elderly people totally out of poverty. Uh, social security is either uh, half to 100% of people's retirement income. And if they didn't have social security, they would not they would not be doing well at all. They would be in poverty, in real poverty. Um, so, and then it, you know there was a sign at one of these ACA conference uh, ACA demonstrations said, "Don't pass this ACA, but don't touch my Medicare, because Medicare also helps." people over 65 stay out of poverty and get decent health care. So I, I don't remember how many millions of people get Medicare in this country. I get Medicare, my husband gets Medicare, 
and it provides for services that we really would be pushing it to afford. So um, in this country, we really have all three systems of healthcare. We have the government healthcare, where the government owns the facilities, employs the physicians, and negotiates for the medication and all that with the Veterans Administration Hospitals, which provide primary care for many veterans who cannot afford health care, and even including Medicare. Some of my brother has a very serious problem right now that he's he he was doing Medicare and he was on Kaiser Health and all that kind of thing. So he went to the veterans, and now he really has the tests that he needs and the medication and the treatment that he needs for his problems. And he wouldn't be able to have all of that if he wasn't a veteran and if he wasn't in the veteran system. The second one is national health, which is what Canada has. Medicare is an example of national health where the, where the government is the insurance agency and, the, and, it pay, and it pays for the care that private physicians and private hospitals and whoever uh, pays for that care. It does. It, it determines to a certain extent what, what. Well, it determines what's paid for that care. But millions of people have Medicare, and if you mess with their Medicare, you are not going to have a happy group of people on your mind on your hands. This the third way is is all this private health, which is really a run and shoot kind of thing. And under private health before they passed the ACA, and even now, there's something like 30 to 40 million people who are not insured, and many more millions who are underinsured and who are not able to afford to get the health care that they need. And under these policies in our country, something like 40,000 people a year die because they do not have health care. Those are statistics from, from public health that you paid for for your tax dollars, sir. Um, and, you know, this, this um, I don't know, this, the, the failure of our country to really deal with this show, it, it actually, our country is kind of libertarian and the philosophy is I've got mine and fuck all y'all. <laughs> That's what the, what the libertarian philosophy is, as far as I'm <laughs> to determine. So, you know, so we have a bunch of people with, and, and it's really cost effective to do health care. They figure that for every dollar that we spend on prenatal health care, we save four to five dollars on the other end because we have prevented problems. So when we don't put money into prenatal care in low income communities, we're really shooting ourselves in the foot big time. And we, it has catastrophic results for many people and for many children. Okay, now education. Everybody is, is uh, the Chicago Public Schools is a shit system and they're horrible and all that. The Chicago Public Schools, because it depends on the neighborhood that the school is in. My son went to Lincoln Park High School. He was in their international baccalaureate program. And that is always on the US News and World Reports list of top 10 high schools in the country. That and Link and uh, Northside Prep. And uh, now I can't even remember because my son graduated like a dec more than a decade ago. So I don't remember all. But some of the Chicago public schools are on these lists of the top 10 high schools in the country. So, you know, it depends on the, on the school itself, where it is and what the resources of the parents are, because the, the city itself under-resources schools, and it has, and it always has. In, um, in the South Side, there was a school called Diet School, D-Y-E-T-T -T, in Bronzeville. They were bringing their school up to, uh, up to code, 
they had more kids graduating, they brought in because of uh, the reforms of the um, of, of local school councils where the school council determined, had people represented the parents who were parents of children in the school. And they, they uh, selected the principals to bring in the principal and they determined how uh, Title I funds are spent. And so they were able to put in, at first they were in many schools, a couple, one school that we went to, they, uh, they were able to make the classes smaller so that for the 60 students that were in the grade level, instead of two teachers and 30 students in each class, they had three teachers and 20 students in each class. And actually the, the, the number that should be in each class is 15, but nobody's gonna go with that. But it shouldn't be 30 for Christ's sake. So, um, so we, under, we deliberately underfund public schools. There were something like 50 public schools that didn't have libraries, including some of the high schools, did not have a school library. There were uh, classes in some schools that were in neighborhoods where there were a lot of, of, of children that had classrooms in the cafeteria and classrooms in the hallway and in the janitor's closet or whatever because we would we did not fund these schools and charter schools and voucher programs are not answers to these we need to fund the schools and people saying oh it's just dissipated into the into the uh bureaucratic whatever but under my experience being 10 years on the lsc at my son's school says that this, that the that the parents determine how a lot of those funds are are spent, and the school has to account to the parents how the how the other funds are 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 spent. So the the budget reports may gave me a total headache, but we had budget reports all of the time, and the school that both schools that my son went to were were good schools. That really did, and people, you know, they just say they should not, yeah, you know, bullshit. You need, you, we need. If we don't put funds, if we don't put adequate resources in our public schools, ninety percent of our children go to public schools. We are going to shoot ourselves in the foot. We are destroying our democracy if we don't teach our children how to a basic educational accomplishments, reading, writing, and arithmetic or whatever, but in addition to that, languages and civics and all of those other things that, that are necessary to be a well-rounded citizen. If we don't do that, we're failing as a society and our responsibility to our children and our responsibility to ourselves and our communities. So um, that's, you know, the, and that's what happened with Betsy, expletive deleted DeVos who had voucher programs and the kids were in a garage someplace and they had a screen that, that the, they didn't even have a person in the room. And that, that quote unquote school received funding with vouchers from those children. And somebody made a buttload of money and left. So that, you know, that's, the voucher programs are bullshit. Now, not all voucher programs are like that particularly, but in general, the charter schools and voucher programs in research studies that are done by really big organizations do not they increase segregation in the schools and, and the children that are in them don't really benefit them. It, there really isn't a real significant improvement in there and in what they're able to do. They, they, they just don't do the, they just don't operate at, at, a, at, a, at a high level on, on all of these um, tests that they give kids and everything. They don't do any better than the kids in public schools. They don't. So we're sucking money out of the public school system because the voucher and charter schools are really designed. Their, their uh, ulterior motive 
is to destroy public education, take money out of public education. So the kids in public schools can't have the extra science teacher and the extra math teacher and small classes. That's what those charter and, and voucher schools are doing. Okay, okay Margaret. I've, I've I'm done. Thank you very much, Margaret. You are about Eleven and a half minutes. Wow. Okay, let's uh, go back to our next speaker, Daniel Rubin. Are you ready to go? Well, I'll give it a try. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Daniel. Thank you. We'll give you ten minutes. Speaker. Oh boy. Boy, I hope I don't need all that. Well, that's okay. Right, okay. Speak. I'm going to start with uh, probably my favorite topic. Uh, I'm the author of a book entitled The Libertarian War on Poverty. And in that book, I quite clearly say, I'm not going to touch the issues of welfare. Let's leave welfare completely aside. Let's not touch the welfare programs at all. We have too much work to do to help people get out of poverty without, well, I would say, if we accomplish everything that I would like to accomplish, I think that we would so reduce poverty that we probably wouldn't need the welfare program very much. So what is that program for poverty on a libertarian basis? It would be reducing or getting rid of the government's standing in the way of people working. Licenses, business regulations, those kinds of matters prevent people from supporting themselves and their families. I want to speak to, in that same regard, the minimum wage. I, I perceive the minimum wage as probably the worst program that government has ever come up with. It hurts only the poor. It prevents children from taking jobs and, and getting the experience which will put them on a path to making a good, decent, honest living. But it's not just children. It's others. Because we know that people, being people, they change jobs or they fail at their current occupations and they have to start over. Or they get injured and they have to start over. Now, when they start over, they, what they need is experience. And if it, their current talent doesn't justify paying them the minimum wage, they are not entitled to a job. They are prevented by law from having a job and gaining the experience in their new chosen occupation. Let's move on to, well, my new favorite topic is education. People analyze libertarians as being something of an absolute. I don't. I think it's something that changes society at the margin, making things 
a little bit better. Because right now, things are very, very screwed up. You have the urban center people being trapped in failing public schools. We need a voucher system, especially for them. Because they, the school system now is failing them. The Supreme Court of the United States recently ruled on the decision of involving the main educational system. This is terribly, terribly exciting. I think this, if we can get a voucher system in the state of Illinois, can form the basis for having some of the finest education in the urban center that we have ever seen. And why do I say that? How am I connecting the main decision, which had to do with religious schools? 64% of all Black citizens belong to Uh, I'm getting a call in. It's going to make some noise. Is that okay? Yes, Daniel. Go ahead and keep rebutting. I can't right, hear thank you, me. Dan. Keep going. All right. Good. So, virtually all major minorities have their favorite church. It's not the mainstream churches. These are independent churches. I look in my crystal ball and I see these independent churches forming schools. Similar to the Catholic Church, but more local in nature. People on this call have spoken as to regulation. I can't think of a more wonderful system than our churches keeping an eye on the quality of schooling. And with a voucher system, people on the inner city will be able to go to small church-based, faith-based schools parents will have uh, extraordinary faith that their children will be safe and have a, an excellent environment within which to learn and to become young adults. So that's education. Let's move on to health care, which will be my last topic. I will not talk about Medicare. I will not talk about Obamacare. What I would like to talk about is expanding choice. I would like to hear the government getting, well, you know, it is a government program. It's called an HSA, Health Savings Account. This is where, as young people, they will put money away, tax-free. That's why it's a government program, and I'm in favor of it. This will provide, most, most health uh, problems are incurred when you're older. I'm 72. I can see it now. <laughs> the health problems are coming. But when you are young, you don't have as many problems. That's if we were to expand the eligibility for health savings accounts. When shit happens, to, and it always does, bad things happen to people. They're going to have health savings accounts 
to smooth out the problems. I'm not saying that they shouldn't have insurance. They should have insurance. I will give you my own example of my own life. My wife and I were being offered a health insurance policy where the premium was going to be well in excess of a thousand dollars a month. I told them to go stuff it. I went out and bought a ten thousand dollar deductible policy. I was younger. And every dime I saved, which I had been putting away, or had been paying for premiums, about that thousand dollar level, I was able to put about six hundred dollars a month away, because I brought my premium down from over a thousand dollars to about three hundred and fifty dollars a month. Then, when I had my heart attack. And a ten thousand dollar bill came in. I wrote a check because the money was there. When I was young, maybe stupid, but healthy, I put the money away. When I was older and had started having health problems, the money was there. I didn't have to waste my money on health insurance. I had it for catastrophic events. I've said my piece. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Okay, Robert, I gave, again, I gave you about 11 minutes. All right, uh, Bob, you're next. Okay, uh, thanks, Justin, uh, for your efforts. And uh, I just want to say that... Uh, I am a uh, basically a, a geo-libertarian at heart, meaning uh, that I believe that, uh, that uh, taxing land is preferable over taxing income or having product or sales taxes or whatever, um, uh, you know, for, for things that are necessary that we need to tax. Or so things like roads, for instance, um, and this is based on the idea that things things like roads, uh, schools, uh, parks, uh, museums, restaurants, uh, high speed internet service, all these things give value to land. So rather than tax productivity, rather rather than tax labor, because whenever you tax something, you're basically going to get less of it you're discouraging the <laughs> the production when you tax it so we don't want to do that and we want people to consume and buy items we don't want to discourage them uh we want people to buy things and which helps create jobs you know it keeps us productively employed so what we advocate for is is taxing land and uh taxing land value i should say which is, which is to say the same thing as taxing location value. And it's voluntary. Those that are willing and able to pay for exclusive use of land in the best locations will, will pay more for it. And, you know, and, uh, and those of us that uh, choose not to, uh, you know, will not. We won't live in those. Uh, we won't, you know, demand exclusive use of land in those, in those best locations. Uh, but this also, also has another benefit, and this keeps land uh, people from speculating and having more land than they can productively use or you know or employ that land. Um, that leave this that doesn't force up prices on people that you know, on, on labor and capital that wants to come together to produce goods and services and, and make a profit. It doesn't force. The, uh, the available land up is such a high price where they're no longer to come together cooperatively to uh, to earn a profit. So there's a lot of benefits in that. I highly recommend reading Progress and Poverty by Henry George uh, to learn all about that. 
so that's but that's all of kind of a you know my th theoretical end goal uh but besides the you know the, the taxing the land then you know we're basically it's geo geo libertarians i should say we're basically you know small small government people we want you know we figure the least government is the is the best government. We don't like a lot of government interference. Um, although I do take exception with certain things, like say, for instance, drugs. I I, I don't totally embrace the this you know total open freedom on drug use that a lot of libertarians do. Um, I think there might I think there's maybe some room in there for some uh, for some laws, uh, just because of the fact that you know things like like opioids, for instance, are just so addicting and they're, they're so ruinous to lives and they're such a cause of, of crime and everything. And I just think that maybe, you know, we need to have some, some laws regarding that. And all that being said, that brings me to my next book recommendation. Uh, and that is Social Statics by Herbert Spencer. And this is essentially the... I always call it, I always refer to it as the Bible of libertarianism. And this is when, where Herbert Spencer, volume one, by the way, I mean, uh, the first edition, I mean, uh, is what one you want to read. It's uh, came out in 1851. So the first edition is the best one. And that's when he also uh, endorsed the, you know, the idea of a land value tax uh, in lieu of all other taxes. Uh, the second edition, I don't know, the, the, uh, the uh, apparently the landowners got to him and he, he changed his opinion on on taxing land. So that's why uh, that's why geo libertarians all recommend the first edition. So, but uh, but anyway, but Herbert Spencer introduced the idea of the law the law of equal freedom, which means that you know basically you should be able to, you should be free to do what you want to do is, until you you know, interfere with somebody else's right to do what they want to do. And again, and this is uh, within limits and they don't mean, uh, you know, I'm going to open up a, you know, a, a tannery in my backyard uh, or a coal mine, you know, <laughs> and, you know, and, and, and you know, wreck my neighbor's uh, land or, or whatever. That doesn't mean that, you know, I'm not, not going to be able to do that. Um so I mean, there's there you know we have some you know, there's common room for common sense laws in there, but essentially we want less less government. And like when it comes to schools, uh, I can't really I'm gonna have to go back and read my copy. I I see it in uh, right now, but I've got like uh, oh I got stacks of other books and uh, other crap on it. I if I pull it out, it'll create an avalanche, so I can't move it now. I have to dig it out again and read it. I can't really believe, remember what he says about education but uh i've come to believe as well though that uh that uh you know vouchers perhaps are the best solution uh, one thing you're going to get you know now like i don't have kids so you know i've never had really a, a dog in the fight but uh i i, I do uh appreciate the parents are uh recoiling at the things their children are being taught in the government schools like uh like all this uh trans transgender rights and having all this pride and gay lgbt stuff shoved down their throats and you know pronouns and and all that i would be absolutely horrified if i had kids in school and uh they were being force-fed that nonsense and i would immediately pull them out and homeschool them if there were no no uh voucher systems available but uh, but yeah i think that if you you know if you're given uh, if you were uh, given whatever the wherever the public school in your neighborhood is given uh per child if you were given that amount like in a voucher i would say yeah that's the way to go and uh let parents choose their own schools i think parents are smart enough to you know they're going to want the best thing they can for their kids and they're going to find the best school they can for them for the money and the profit motive i think would produce those good schools and uh and even if there's uh if there's uh, religious education in there so what that's that's the that's the parents choice um you know so i'd say let uh let, let there be parochial schools 
or whatever. That's, you know, uh, again, that's that's the parents' choice. That's freedom. And one thing we want is towards libertarian is more freedom rather than less freedom. I always want to err on the side of more freedom than less freedom. Again, and, uh, and with all this, a lot of these are, you know, kind of uh, theoretical goals that we're kind of reaching for. It, in the, at the current situation we're in, though, the country, you know, has been taken over by American Marxists. They run the, the schools, uh, the, the teachers' unions, you know, <laughs> etc. They're, they're about the last people I would want to give money to. But uh, but the the Marxists have taken over all the you know public schools, colleges. They run the the the, the major media. Uh, they, you know, and of course, in, the, in all levels of democratic government, and uh, so the immediate emergency we have to take care of is removing these people from office. All uh, the, the George Soros prosecutors, uh, the, you know, the governor, like Jail Pritzker in Illinois, uh, these people all have to go. That's the, the dire emergency. So I have to, uh, you know, plead with my libertarian. Uh, cousins here to uh, to do what has to be done. We have to stop the bleeding first. We must vote for you know the Republicans all up and down the line uh, to displace these Democrats and stop the bleeding. We need to get back you know to a con- you know a constitutional conservatism uh, before we before we can f- finally hone this with libertarian values. We need to take the intermediate step is we have to replace Democrats with Republicans. We have to get all this, you know, woke critical race theory and transgenderism and all that nonsense out of the way. Right now, there's a girl in Illinois, I think a 12 year old girl who was taken away from her mother because she told uh, she told her uh, father when she was having the. Uh, custodial visitation because they're divorced she doesn't feel safe at home because she feels that she's transgender and uh and the, and the government stepped in and said no that's you know we're you know the, the, the mother has lost her her custodial uh rights because she doesn't affirm this girl's trans identity and this is going to be going on through through schools all all over the place now all you know you kid is going to tell some teacher when he's six years old that he's that he's trans which he's been probably been influenced by a lgbtq wppbia teacher and uh kid thinks kid thinks he's trans and now the school is going to step in and and make you give this kid puberty puberty blocking drugs and gender you know affirmation and they're, they're already been doing in other states like california they're already they're already doing uh uh surgeries on on children as young as 12 okay. just un- unbelievable so anyway let's uh just to wrap it up uh we have to uh immediately stop the patient from bleeding to death on the on the table uh we have to vote republican we have to support trump or desantis whoever oh. the candidate is and, and, and in illinois we must get rid of jb pritzker he has to go him and his no bail no bail pritzker's got to go okay that's it. Trump back oh, all right man. all right now charlie you're next you got all right minutes. am i next 10 minutes charlie oh i ain't gonna take that long anyhow let's thank uh justin for his presentation and uh the other members of the uh, uh, Libertarian Party for uh, joining in the discussion. I'll be covering six topics very quickly. Number one, I've read through the entire platform word for word, and um, I, I think it, for reasons of economy, just replace it with this expression, every man for himself. Every man for himself. That should be on your campaign literature. That summarizes it in entirely. Number two, I think the libertarians fail to realize that we are living in an increasingly complex society. As a matter of fact, 
we're we're living in a global economy and a return to some mythical period of time without any sort of administrative actions is uh not realistic and perhaps even mythical uh in 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 thought number three i've noticed that the libertarian party never really addresses any issues they keep reiterating this same doctrine over and over again um believing that it suits all situations i guess they're locked into this and they're actually have addressed it with some apparently some degree of pride um actually the document needs to go through from someone from an ethical perspective there are things in there that are i'll say this point point they are very unethical and they should not be advocated by anyone under any circumstances uh there are problems confronting our society and i'd like to hear some real solutions and not 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 ones that have to fit in a preconceived notion you approach a problem with the most adequate solution available whether that requires more government or less whatever the degree of involvement does not dictate the solution the solution is is defined by the problem and the remedy is the most suitable one and you can't decide the type of remedy that is going to be in each and every situation that's invalid that's not logical that's not what you how you govern that's not government number 3 i heard that children should not be paid for working i don't know if children are working in the first place but they should not be paid or people that get a job they're new at should not be compensated well that's a that's a new one to me um ostensibly it's a training program well the department of labor and all of the trades and crafts unions offer training programs but they certainly compensate people for the work they perform uh there's no free labor in the i i i i we embrace slavery or what i can work perform without compensation has actually been argued at the college that's a new one i i never thought we would arrive at that was called an uh, and the next one is um uh let's see number 5 if somebody needs health care i think it's incumbent upon us collectively to provide it and i don't know what all this issues are about this if somebody needs health care i don't think we're ethically in a position to say well you're entitled to it or not we should have the apparatus in place to see that it's provided and the best health care that they need uh and to say that people have to save or whatever uh, no we collectively are responsible for the health of all the other people in the community here very simply and last of all i objected to this fact and i don't even want to say it that somehow the government is a vehicle of violence we do not allow at the college complexes uh such language that is beyond the merit of free speech uh you're encouraging violence meaning and you end up with situations like bombs being placed in federal buildings militia groups operating apart from the law people showing up with weaponry in state capitals and ultimately the taking of the united states capital is somehow a, a, an act of violence that is justified no sir i'm sorry you discredit yourself as an organization uh and the officers as well for any time they hear that statement or statements that affect being made and not correcting the individuals for doing so this institution 
we do. We do not consonant language that fosters or encourages violence in any fashion. That is what's wrong with that statement. Anyhow, there's a little bit of lecturing for me. Thanks a lot to the Libertarian Party and hope all of your candidates do well. Congratulations on getting on the ballot. Okay, uh, Justin, any more rebuttals real quick before we move on to Justin's final words? Okay, Justin Tucker, you get the final say and uh, start uh, start uh, your uh, remarks. All right, so I think it's really interesting how Charlie took me pointing out that the government bombs people overseas and for a stating objective fact that the government kills people I like how he how he called that a call to violence. That is the biggest crock of shit I've ever heard, at least up until to or at least at least today. The dumbest, stupidest thing I've ever heard today. Oklahoma City. One full at a time, sir. What did the Look, guy just do call, in Oklahoma? Oh, for pointing that out, he's going to say Oklahoma City. Okay. Yeah. Charlie doesn't have an argument. Charlie's Charlie just says when you when you when you state objective fact that the government blows people up overseas and kills people. So just pointing that out, somehow I'm a terrorist or something. That is, or calling for terrorism. That is crock of shit. Charlie's full of shit. Um, everybody else, thank you for, for speaking up. Um, you know, um, it's always good to hear what you have to say, but Charlie, that bullshit about stating that, that government, our government takes our tax dollars and blows people up and then that makes me a domestic terrorist is really uh, really idiotic um, but that's all I suppose thanks for having me I had a good time I'm a little tired I worked today but uh, whoo Thanks, college. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Charlie. Even though you said the most idiotic thing I heard today, that domestic terrorism crap. Uh, all, all right. Justin, let's get on to some other points. Surely you can do so. Okay. Um, <laughs> you can rebut Let me what scroll through the chat. Steve Grossman says uh, the U.S. government is the demonstrably the most violent military operation on the globe. That was nonsense. Charlie, I completely agree, Steve. Um, Margaret, I should not be forced to support schools with my tax dollars to teach children that I should not be a citizen. You, I, I, who, who's teaching... I don't know who's teaching those. If she can, I don't know. Well, George Bush the first said that atheists shouldn't be citizens. That's one thing. Okay. Well, and, that's you and, pick one guy and you pick well, one. Well, no, guy but the but but you know these little Christian schools is they they are are I can't I couldn't even send my child there even if I wanted to, which I wouldn't. I wouldn't be able to send my child there because the child would would be an atheist child and they, they wouldn't be allowed there. They're able to discriminate not only against employees, but also against whoever comes there, even though tax dollars would be supporting them. Because that's true with social agencies now. Tax dollars support these child placement agencies that are religious agency, and they do not place children if they only place children in appropriate Christian my rebuttal uh so. okay well you 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 said which ones and and i'm saying that that's that that, that that's 
that was kind of a more rhetorical. Uh, so that's fine. It's okay. Uh, uh, I jury nullification. Another thing, Charlie just like hates this. Charlie does not like does not like the idea of citizens having the power to say, you know what? Maybe Charlie did. Uh, <clears throat> maybe Charlie did have all this cocaine on him. But I think it's stupid that the government would arrest him for that. So let's 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 let Charlie jail. I, I to Charlie to be against that sort of stuff and and say we have the right. Blah, I think is also more ridiculous nonsense coming from Charlie again tonight. Um, Why don't you work to get laws passed like me? Why do you think I, I work to get laws passed? Not for them to be nullified by some 12 chamokes. Just because you work to get laws passed doesn't mean Washington that they're legitimate. Communicate with legislators, campaign for them in order for the passage of laws. Why don't you come along and do the same thing and have those laws reversed? The I process? do, Charlie. That's why I organize. For why don't election. you do what I do? I do do what you do, Charlie. But those 12 people did nothing. How about you can do both? How about you can work for change through democratic means and tell people that jury nullification is a power that they have? You can do both. You can do both. Because sometimes legislatures move too damn slow. So... You know, it's ridiculous to say that we will be governed by 12 people chosen at random. It's you know what's ridiculous <laughs> not to sense. say that I That's said your that you're completely just did a straw man, Charlie. You totally said that I said something I did not say. You are you, you Charlie's on a roll tonight, man. Charlie is saying the most stupid things. I this is this is a this is a it's a star. Charlie gets a gold info. star for his. Are we his... supposed to have no personal info? Yeah, I think so. Tax or something? I don't know. What Justin, is Justin. No, I didn't call him an idiot. I said his. He's idiotic. There's there's a difference. <laughs> oh, 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 is just oh gosh, Charlie saying. So you're saying that, and I literally did not even say that. So, um, you know, if you're, if you're, uh, if you're a libertarian and you introduce yourself, say hi in the chat. And if you're interested in joining libertarian party, uh, say hi to me. Um, thanks everybody for coming out. Thank you, Charlie, for giving me the fun. Like you, you, I was, this is hilarious. I, I laughed so hard at your at your stuff tonight. So. Okay, okay, uh, Justin, let's uh, keep it keep it to the issues, okay? <laughs> what else do I gotta say? I mean, okay. I mean, how long is my my final rebuttal gonna go on for? I mean, thanks, guys. Uh, you can end whenever you want. All right. Well, thanks, thanks. I can't wait to come back again. See ya. Right. Thank right. you. With that, uh, we'll close tonight's proceedings and continue with the after party. I hereby declare the College of Complexes officially adjourned.